Alright everybody, it's time for another Ink and Paint Club review. Woo! Andy, sound excited. I am excited. I <laughs> spoke very highly of this movie after leaving the theater. Right? Um, so, just as a little uh, preface here, we're trying out face cam. Uh, as you can probably tell, uh, we're trying to add some video elements to our YouTube videos. Uh, so, I guess if you're listening to the audio version on your phone or whatever, you don't have to look at us. Um, you're missing out. We're beautiful. I have the sweet we're beautiful Captain creatures, and you're I, missing out. I have this sweet Captain America shirt on. I plan to put the Hydra symbol over. You, we don't. Andy and I can't actually see each other right now because we're trying to save bandwidth on Skype, so we can't see the shirt I'm wearing. But he'd be very disappointed in me. No, uh, what is it? I, I want to know. What is it? I'll show you later. No, no, I want to know right now. I want, <laughs> the I viewers can see. I anyway. can't. <laughs> Shut up. All right. Uh, so this is actually going to be another kind of first here. Uh, we're not actually reviewing an animated film uh, today. I mean, it's kind of animated, partially. I, th I, th I think it qualifies. I mean, really, how much of it was CGI? I guess it's true. A lot of that whole ending sequence was. Um, but it's based on a comic with, and cartoon, I guess, so I guess it counts. A little Why cartoon, not? you know, kind of a big deal. It was, you know, sort of, I mean, I don't know, I guess it was more so like an underground cult phenomenon <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> I mean, it sold only, like, what, millions of toys and became a pop culture phenomenon. So We're talking many. about the Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles! Woo! Like, remember when they made that really <laughs> shitty-looking 2014 movie? 2014? Oh, the one from a couple years ago that you never watched? <laughs> no, because uh, I know I committed a sin, according to most people on the internet right now. <laughs> Excuse me, anyone who's looking at me on camera, I'm building Warhammer stuff. So I have I'm just sitting here staring at a screen, so So I have something to do with my hands. I, I Don't worry, I'm turning them facing the camera so they can see me. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. But um, um, yeah, I, I, I committed say... the cardinal sin of judging a movie based on the trailer, and the trailer for the 2014 Ninja Turtles didn't look good to me, and then when the movie came out, anyone I... I saw Guardians of the Galaxy again instead of seeing Ninja Turtles, and I was pretty happy I, with my choice. I think you made the wise choice. Any, um, let me explain to you what happened when, 20, when the Ninja Turtles came out. Oh. Went to the theater, taking my friends to go see Guardians because I wouldn't shut up about the movie since I saw it. Yeah. And I wanted to see it again because, if you don't know, Guardians was pretty amazing. It was the tits, uh, man. What happened was we go there, a bunch of kids with Ninja Turtle shirts going into the movie theater, like young teens, you know, the demographic, and even though it's everybody. They left the theater <laughs> after we left our movie. None of them looked happy. <laughs> like, nobody came out, like, going, like, yeah, that movie was movie was pretty good. Everyone just kind of came out looking like, eh, it was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Megan um, Fox was in it. <laughs> Megan, if I, she's in this one. Um, I actually, actually liked her in this one. Yeah. Um, I tried to watch the 2014 movie uh, a couple months. I don't know when. It was a while back. Um, I watched like, it was like, like the a first 10 ago. minutes. I got, what? Wasn't it like a week ago? Well, I tried to watch it the first time um, a while back. I watched it for like 10 minutes and got like super bored. Um, isn't but, it because the first half of the movie is mostly just April O'Neil? Kind of. Yeah, see that was another thing when I talked to people about the movie. I was like, mm, yeah. I, paid to, I paid to see Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I can look um, at pictures but, of Megan Fox on the internet. All right. Um, but in preparation for this movie, which by the way, Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. There, movie title. Um, I, I, I decided I want to actually sit through the whole thing to give it a shot, and I will say it's... It's not very in its good. In its defense, when it's actually focusing on the Ninja Turtles, it's good. Everything else was kind of a hot mess. Here's basically what I hear from anyone I talk to <laughs> about the 2014 Ninja Turtles movie. I heard the elevator scene was good. Yeah. Cut, that, that was, that, that's like the big scene everyone We're all beatboxing in the elevator yeah i'm like <laughs> wait seriously funny. that that's the best scene of the movie why is it the best yeah. scene well because you know it features the ninja turtles being the ninja turtles well, what are yeah. they during the rest of the movie yeah obnoxious um, and i was like well that's kinda. depressing <laughs> um yeah yeah like, like i said any part of the first movie that just is focusing solely on the ninja turtles it's fine the first movie has the same problem that the Transformers movies has. I don't even get me started Is that on there's that. too much stupid human bullshit going on. 
do you really want these poor people to have to sit through me going about going no, on no we had a whole episode on that before i think we could they do a go repeat back and listen to it no <laughs> we have precious time here what are you talking about what are we doing otherwise trying to keep this in a reasonable listening format all right fine um <laughs> Fortunately, uh, the the sequel out of the shadows fixes a lot of those problems that I have with the first one. Um, well, mainly, for one, they got a new director, which was a smart move. Yes, very. And I I don't I feel like the first one. I know it's a Michael Bay produced um, production, but I feel like he had a lot of fingers in the first one. I don't feel it as much in this one. Um, but I will say flat out what I love about this new movie is what the previous movie didn't do is like have fun with it because the first movie was like yes there's little bits of comedy in there Mikey is kind of like the one saving grace of that movie as obnoxious as he is Uh, he's supposed to be obnoxious he's a teenager right (laughs) <laughs> um, but the first movie is just like so brooding and just so depressing most of the time. Well, well yeah, that's a thing. And I was really surprised when, you know, the trailer for Out of the Shadows came out because I'm like, oh, look, the new Ninja Turtles movie. But I'm not going to mm-hmm. not watch the trailer. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to give it its fair shake if a trailer could see it. And I was like stunned. I'm like, wait a minute. This movie actually looks fun. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think that is the one word I can use to describe it. It's it, it's fun. I felt like it's a, not, I felt like a kid leaving the movie theater. Yeah, it it, it <laughs> I've never really sat down to watch the '80s Ninja Turtles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I watched like an episode or two of it, and I was like, "This isn't for me." I've I've watched a couple episodes of the Four Kids one, and I want to kind of give that a chance. I love I love the one that's on Nickelodeon right now. I think that does a really good job. Um, but see, uh, I my experience with Ninja Turtles is, of course, I watched the '80s cartoon, had the toys. I think I was more into the video games for the most part, especially Turtles mm-hmm. in Time, which was to this day one of my favorite beat 'em ups of all time, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And then yeah. you know they had to make that really crappy 3D remake, which I thought was pretty awful. Oh. But um, ah, God, I know Tyler is gonna make fun of me because I keep saying but. <laughs> but dick. Um, but anyway, I no, but like I love the Ninja Turtles. You know, I'm always I I saw the movies. Yes, I I know how terrible the third one is. You're never gonna hear me defend that one. I really liked the TMNT movie they did, the animated one that came out. Yeah, that was a good. I I, I was really sad that Imagi kind of um fell out because they made the Ninja Turtles movie. Did they make that Astro Boy movie? I you know what? As much as I was interested in that, I never saw it. I didn't either. I think they made that. And they were going to make a Gatchaman movie, too, and it looked interesting. I was, I'm sad that never came to be. Oh, you mean instead um, we got G-Force, the movie about the gerbils? Yeah. <laughs> that, was a bit of, that, was, that was a bit of a marketing confusion. It's like, wait uh, a minute. I this <laughs> but, was... um, yeah, like, like you were saying, like, we saw, I saw the trailer for Ninja Turtles, and as much as, like, oh, this is, like, as much as the first one looked really bad, it's like this seems like it's gonna be more of the same. But the more the trailers came out, and the fuck, they kept playing tricky <laughs> all the trailers. Oh no, my, my favorite is when I mean I loved the you know the, the the debut trailer where they were playing you know it's tricky by Run DMC, but mm-hmm. then they sealed the deal for me by playing uh, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. When yeah, they did the Super Bowl spot. Right. And then they decide, like, here's the one thing I'm gonna say about this movie. I have to sum it up. It's a movie based off an 80s franchise that embraces the insanity. Yeah. I love I that about it. Fa- like, this movie realizes that for me, Ninja Turtles who grew up is with a those campy toys and the, like, product. You know, I mean, how excited I was it, to see the Technodrome? It is not meant to Spoiler be taken alert. super the seriously. The Technodrome. And you know, the ev- giant I think every character battle in this station movie, with the big eye on top that appears in the movie. I don't think Andy can hear me. I mean... That, that, that to me is just awesome because I mean it, like Rocksteady and Bebop are awesome you get to see mm. Krang like yeah, the movie yeah. just flat out embraces like all this stuff it doesn't try to make it real Right. it just yeah. says like no we, what what do Ninja Turtles fans want well they want to see all their favorite <laughs> things um, and psh, I, will, I think that's what it, we got it, yeah you, you got a very campy 
interpretation basically of the 80s cartoon um it it, it, it put a little more seriousness serious say it felt more it. like I'd say it felt, it felt it feels a little bit more even though I never watched enough of it. It felt more like the 2014 cartoon because it actually focused on a lot of the. Uh... Yeah. Actually, I feel this movie falls in line with the original. Like, if I had to consider, I would say this is the real Ninja Turtles three. We should have gotten, mm. you know, instead of the time traveling one. Sure. I can I can be down with that. Um, I will say. As much as I did really like this movie, it is not perfect by any stretch. Well, no, I mean, what movie um, is? I do think that Mad there Max. were a few bits. What? No, nah, I was saying, what movie is perfect? Mad Max. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fury Road. Flawless. Um, I will say that uh, I think Krang was a little mishandled. Um, See, first of all, I, yeah. I, will, I, I do say I did like Brad Garrett <laughs> as Krang. It was interesting. But, um, like, like always, guys, there's probably gonna be there's gonna be spoilers in this review, so I'm sorry. Um, but it kind of, I, I get why they did what they did, but it kind of annoyed me that like, um, Shredder goes, like, as transported to see Krang, and there's no like big like reveal. It's just like, by the way, alien, here here you go, um, just go, just roll with it. He lays out what's gonna happen. And you don't see him for an hour. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a good hour chunk before, like, the last 15 minutes of the movie. You don't see Krang again. I can, I can understand that. I mean, to me, to me that kind of made sense because, like, Krang was always more of, like, a, um... Krang was always more of, like, the actual big villain in the Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. It always seemed like in a lot of cases until, I think, like, the 2014 cartoon. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the 80s cartoon was all sorts of silly and mostly featured him being the guy in charge and Shredder being more of his, like, errand boy. Right. Um, but I really thought it was... I, I didn't... I think for how much they decided to cram into the movie, mm-hmm. they actually did a really good job. I mean, yeah, Krang doesn't do as much as you'd think, but I think he makes a statement known. Yeah, I... Like, again, I get why they did what they did. And I think what they did with him was good. Um, I, I I just feel like if they had flashed back to him at least once between the movie, because it's like I almost forgot that Krang was in the movie, because he shows up, tells Shredder what's going on, you don't see him for an hour, and then he shows up again. I'm like, oh yeah, Krang is in this movie, isn't he? Um, they do they mention him every now and then, but you don't see him. Um, so it's kind of uh, I don't know. Um, well, why do you need to see Krang when you have probably the greatest villain <laughs> duo? I mean, these yeah. guys these guys practically stole the sh- stole the show for me. Bebop but... and Rocksteady are fucking amazing. Oh those. god, they were they were like you know I was excited when I saw them in the trailer. Mm-hmm. I was not disappointed by oh god their they were portrayals beautiful. in this movie. Like they I, are. I love that they are like the best bros even before they turn into animals. They're frat boys, and that they're is frat boys. awesome. Like they are just <laughs> loud, obnoxious frat boys. Oh. And I love the fact that just like in the cartoons, for the most part, they get turned into fucking mutants. They're okay with that. Yeah, they're like they're excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's like even like during the process of being mutated, they're like, "This feels amazing." <laughs> well, yeah, because you know, and I thought Seamus did a really good job. I never thought I'd. Yeah, who is Seamus? Is he like a wrestler? He's a WWE wrestler, and actually, mm-hmm. Seamus is the reason I won twenty bucks. I entered a cool. ro- I entered a Royal Rumble uh, betting pool without any prior knowledge really of wrestling. I knew a little bit about it, but um. I ended up picking Seamus just based on his name, and he won. <laughs> Seamus is the name of my cat, who I don't know where he went off to. Yeah, but uh, um, I liked him. I, I wish I could remember the guy who played Bebop. Gary Anthony Williams? I loved him. He he was Uncle Ruckus on the Boondocks. Okay, well, that explains why <laughs> that explains why I loved him so yeah. much, because um, I, every, he, every time these guys were on screen, I mm-hmm. was either laughing or just thrilled to see you know after ninja turtles 2 where we got toka and razor yeah we finally get to see bebop and rocksteady on the big screen and they are done so 
well. Yeah, I, I think they do the characters a lot of justice. And I'm wondering if, like, their decision to bring them in now, um, because the they they were recently introduced to the 2014 cartoon, and I think they're just as good as they are in this movie, like, the way they're handled. So I'm wondering if, like, their popularity in the cartoon now is kind of like, all right, well, people obviously like these this char- these characters, so let's bring them into the movie. Um, I will say my one gripe, and it is a super nitpicky gripe <laughs> with, the, with the characters, is I thought it was weird that they were named Bebop and Rocksteady from the start. Those names weren't given to them. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't mind that because they do sound like, you know, cartoonish thug names and I just can't see Shredder giving them code names like Bebop and Rocksteady, you know. Well, the thing um, in the 2014 cartoon that I actually really... uh, Yeah, see, I couldn't get into it, so for me the 2014 cartoon is... It looks decent, I get what it is, I think the people Mm -hmm. who are screaming and yelling about it because it wasn't like the 80s cartoon you need to remember that the 80s cartoon wasn't exactly high art and it well, hasn't aged very well i i think people who haven't given the new show a chance and are our turtles fans i think really need to give it a shot because i like am not a i would not call myself a ninja turtles fan i have really only watched this one cartoon and the the cg movie they did that's basically my extent of ninja turtles knowledge and from what I can wait, tell... Wait, you never watched the original live-action movies? I have never seen any of the live-action movies. Okay, we're going to stop this review. <laughs> and you're going to go and watch... Well, the if they th- put more than Turtles in Time on Netflix, I would watch no, them. I, I will admit, I was really upset because I went to go watch TMNT <laughs> and I saw all they had was three and I cut me deep. Yeah, <laughs> I was, yeah, I, I, I was, I was sad. Because I was actually going to sit down and watch. I was like, you know what, I should watch the old 90s movies. Oh, they're and good. it bums me out... That Turtles in Time, or is it Turtles in Time? It's not called movies? Turtles in Time, but that was the subtitle because they technically go, you know, they go back in time. Right. But, you know, yeah, Turtles I, in I'm Time is the fourth only Ninja one that's Turtles on Netflix video right game. Now. Um, yeah, but it's terrible. But I think, I think the, the, the show now, I think, from what, from what I've been told, pays a lot of homage uh, to every facet of um, Ninja Turtles lore. They'll bring in characters who were only toys. Um, they do a lot of callbacks to the comics and to the 80s cartoon. I mean, hell, they just did a crossover with the 80s um, show with all the original voice actors back. Yeah, but don't they just, like, continuously make fun of the 80s show? They kind of shit on each other. <laughs> um, but I guess getting back to the movie... Um, what did you think about Stephen Amell as Casey Jones? He was the um, one person in the movie I did not really care for. Okay, that's fine. Like I get it. I, I mean, I didn't get into Arrow, but I know, and I know that St- I know that Stephen Amell is supposed to be like the super awesome guy. But sorry, my they're letting the dogs out. <laughs> you know, it's not what like um, I told them, but no. um, I I found Casey Jones' character to be just kind of boring. Yeah, I I would definitely give you that. Um, I didn't like the way I, he looked either. Yeah, well, I clean. watch Arrow. I, I watch Arrow. I think mostly out of habit, to be honest. Um, I mean, I enjoy it, but it's kind of just like I've been watching Arrow for five seasons. Might as well keep going. Um, but I have this thing, and this and this is completely my own hang up. Um, when I'm introduced to an actor for the first time as a specific role, I have a hard time disassociating them them from that character. So the entire time I'm watching this movie is like, you keep saying your name is Casey Jones, but you look exactly and you talk exactly like Oliver Queen. Yeah, like I just, I mean, I don't know. He just, he doesn't and, do enough in the movie to ruin it by any means or to be just mm-hmm. like an annoyance, but as a character... I like to me if you want to see a good Casey Jones watch the first live action movie because the guy mm-hmm. who plays Casey in that one spot on <laughs> like okay. no he he's really good he's got the look he's got the accent he's got like he is this guy was Casey Jones <laughs> mm-hmm. and I really think yeah. like Stephen Amell did an okay job like that, yeah I I, th- but I he think he was the he, weakest he, part of the movie I agree um 
I mean, he, he, did, he did a passable job. He got in, did what he needed to do, got out. Um, I do agree that I really wish he would have had his long hair instead of his... I think that's my part of my problem, is that he didn't look any different than how he looks on Arrow. Yeah, that's he's, what kind of... He's still got the shaved head, and he's got the goatee and stuff, so he looks exactly the same. That's what really kind of bugged me, and the fact that, you know, it was kind of cool that Casey was, you know, this just vigilante... In like you know, typically Casey's a vigilante. I know in the 2014 cartoon, he's just like a younger. Yeah, he and April are teenagers. So. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, it makes yeah. sense. I mean, uh, it makes, I mean like, yeah, he, it, he it, was, within the context of the show, it makes sense. Yeah, he was a vigilante, and his origin in this movie, I get why they did it because it was an easy way to tie it all together. Yeah. But I felt that making him a cop and then suddenly a cop who likes to play hockey and then suddenly he's going to go out and fight ninjas yeah i I meant yeah i'd meant to ask like what was your since you're more familiar with turtle history that like what your thought on him making him a cop because i didn't think that would it seemed like that wasn't part of any kind of established uh lore like he never been a cop before it's an easy Uh, way to tie it together and mm -hmm. i guess it wasn't terrible but i kind of like in the first ninja turtles movie i know i keep going back to that i don't mean to be one of those people no no but it was kind of cool because he just shows up as casey jones like him and Mm -hmm. raf get into a fight like yeah and it's just like who is this guy oh he's a vigilante who fights with a hockey stick and like other like random like a cricket Mm -hmm. Uh, did he have a cricket bat i can't remember but yeah, it was just kind of cool that he just kind of came out of nowhere, and I think they could have worked him in better, you know, if, like, oh, he's a guy who knows the Turtles were the real reason Shredder got taken down in the first movie, mm-hmm. so he decided to kind of become, like, a vigilante. Like, yeah. I think there would be more unique ways to do it, but, I mean, it, it worked. Yeah, I, I definitely think, had they gone on a route of, like, because... And, and like in the end of the first movie, Shredder, you know, he gets you know, obviously it kind of sums it up in this movie, which is why I, I said like you don't really need to watch the first movie to understand how it shadows. <laughs> yeah, they they pretty much sum it up as like the turtles took him down. Uh, Will, Will Arnett. Arnett takes the Will yeah. Arnett takes the credit for it for it. Shredder goes to jail. That's pretty much all you need to know. Um, I mean, as but, someone who didn't watch the 2014 movie and give her anything i was not lost in the slightest they yeah. really do a wonderful job of bringing you up to speed like right mm-hmm. away yeah they're like right out of the gate they're like here's here's what's going on let's go um yeah what was i gonna say oh well yeah with casey i think had they gone a route of like yeah shredder in jail but there's like still foot clan shit going on and he's like like He's just he's just a, like a random citizen who just uh, he's just not gonna stand for this. So, that, so that's why he's out kicking ass. Yeah, I, like, per- that, I think that would have been perfectly fine. I think it would have been just easy because I'm pretty sure most kids and most people seeing the movie are aware of who Casey Jones is, and mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it, it was okay. But like I said, to me, with so much good stuff as a Turtles fan going on in the movie between Rocksteady and Bebop being awesome, the Turtles getting to be brothers and getting to do all their, mm. you know, slaps. You know, they they got to really be the Turtles. Everything else yeah. in the movie, I, I just really think he was the only weak part, and it's not even like he was terrible. He was the weakest. No. Yeah. 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 Um, speaking of the Turtles themselves, I think... This movie did a lot better job with their relationship, because um, in the first movie, I just personally I just didn't feel like you know they were brothers. They did they just didn't feel like the turtles. I'll put it that way. It's the easiest way I can say it. Um, but this, Out of the Shadows, just you know it plays up the camp. They know to have fun with it. Um, you know, Mikey's always constantly making jokes. Raph's constantly pissed off. Um, People wonder I, why I love Raphael so much. It's because <laughs> I personally identify with him a lot. I saw a lot uh, of shades of the Ink and Paint Club during the movie. Oh. Uh, which one am I? I? I guess you're Leonardo. Oh. Okay. Um, bossing, but, me and, bossing me and Kyle around. <laughs> you guys don't listen to me at all. Um, I do want to say that I think uh, I'm really glad that Donnie got a lot more screen time this time around because I feel like he was really underused in the first movie. 
Um, That's another reason so, I'm glad I didn't watch that first movie. I heard the turtles themselves were just really poorly done, and you gotta have, you gotta yeah. give the turtles their time. And in this movie, everyone yeah. seemed to have their moments. Yeah, ev- everyone. I think everyone had a pretty good arc um, going on. Now I want okay. So there's a subplot here going on is that like basically I, I think it, it was probably in the trailers. I think um, basically the subplot about like well if the ooze can turn people into animals then it can turn the animals into humans. Um, am I the only one who felt like that subplot kind of wasn't needed? It was there to create strife among the turtles. I mm-hmm. mean, it was kind of a MacGuffin of sorts, but... I mean, I, I they didn't make it out to be as big a deal. Yeah. So it didn't really bother me. Because, I mean, a big part of this movie is that they're really... You know, after they saved the city, they, they, they want to become people, basically. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was kind of an interesting take that they had this option in their hands you know it did create strife because that was always kind of like you know leonardo and Raphael always butt heads mm-hmm. because leonardo wants to be the leader Raphael, you know thinks you know acts now thinks later you know and michelangelo like like I, I, fe- I felt that even though it was like you said it's sort of like an unnecessary subplot it didn't overpower anything in the movie enough yeah like it wasn't like the stupid glasses in the transformers movie um, yeah. Where that was like, like at least from what I remember, as I said, mm-hmm. I have a very biased opinion, but like I just remember that being a really stupid, like a MacGuffin is what they always call it. Right. I guess. It was I, a subplot I, I, that was there and gone. Yeah, and I think that's my issue with it. It's not like, oh, I hate this movie because of it, but I, it just seemed like it was brought up, caused like a brief strife. And then is not brought up again till the end, where they're like, "Oh, should we use this?" And then they're like, "No." And then that's that's the end. It's like brought up twice. It it just felt like when they were setting it up, it was going to be like a consistent problem, but it seemed like it was there. They don't mention it for a long string of time, and then it's gone. Well, the movie's pretty jam packed to begin with because you have the mm-hmm. Shred- you have Shredder returning. You have the turtles fighting amongst themselves, but also trying to prevent Shredder with his new, you know, goons. Mm -hmm. And then you have Casey Joan tossed into the mix. I felt that it did a pretty good job of balancing and tying up a lot of loose ends, because the subplot with them turning human didn't need to really go anywhere. And I think a big part of that, like, I mean, maybe this is just my mentality, but it's a, like, the Ninja Turtles are a kid's thing. I mean, I don't mean to say that disparagingly. But no. I mean that more so in the sense, like, it's a movie made by Nickelodeon Studios based off, you know, a toy line and a cartoon from the mm-hmm. 80s that has persisted for, you know, all this time. I think it's passable in this case because the really the best way I can summarize this movie is it was this fun. Yeah. Like, I, with, I, when, you, when you consider, and I know I'm wearing a Captain America shirt, and all that right now, so I don't mean to sound come off as disparaging, but we live in a time when movies are all trying to tie together, you know, boatloads of continuity, and you have mm-hmm. to see, you know, you don't have to, but you really want to. I can't imagine Civil War being that entertaining if you didn't see Winter Soldier. I, yeah, I and agree. I, I Winter, can't see Civil Winter. War definitely banks on you have seen the other movies. And don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic payoff. Oh no, like, Civil War was great. Yeah, Civil War to me was... That, that like you know that to me was the real Avengers movie because mm-hmm. I didn't really... it's, it's Avengers two and a half. I <laughs> see. I didn't like the Avengers movies that much. They were passable, but Civil War just blew the lid off of it for mm-hmm. me. I loved every minute of it, and I mean that's what I liked about Ninja Turtles though so much is that I went I went in. I didn't see the 2014 movie. I didn't want to, but I was able to get right in. The movie wastes no time. It just it's the Ninja Turtles movie about the Ninja Turtles, which <laughs> I think was fantastic, because you yeah. got everything you need, you got all sorts of crazy set pieces, like the airplane transition, you know, the big... F- I mean, I guess I could have used a little bit more nin- Foot Clan versus Turtles fighting, but mm-hmm. with all the stuff going on, the final fight against Krang was awesome. Yeah. Like, I liked, <laughs> I- how, I liked how that it almost really was, like, a video game boss fight. Oh, yeah, like... the. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love the whole 
the whole bit at the end with Krang. I love I, I love how they tried to make the Mandroid as believable as they possibly could. <laughs> I love that pretty much any time that they uh, were started to get the upper hand on him, he literally just like starts pulling spare parts out of the Technodrome. <laughs> Like they uh, chop off his he chops off his hand and he literally just summons another hand. And uh, no, I liked it when he <laughs> literally summons the arm with the mace on the end of it. Yeah. And then the other one had like a gun, and then he has a chest piece that turns into a <laughs> yeah, gun. Yeah, like this fucking chest cannon just comes out of nowhere and attaches to him. And it was just great because this this felt more like a comic book movie than mm-hmm. most comic book movies because it was just outlandish. It really kind of felt more in line with like Deadpool, how Deadpool didn't really. It, take itself seriously and focused more on the hilarious, mm-hmm. like over the top aspects. That's what Ninja Turtles felt like. It was, it was, it was goofy and campy and non apologetic about it. I mean, if I had to give it a title based on pizza, I'd say it's extra cheesy, and that's just fine. <laughs> I like that. I mean, it's it's an extra cheesy good time, and I yeah. loved it, and I would happily see it again, if not just to enjoy more of Rocksteady and Bebop. Mm-hmm. being bros <laughs> right um the last thing uh i want to just ask you about like how how did you feel about tyler perry as baxter stockman he blew my mind <laughs> like i know tyler perry's a good actor mm-hmm. i know he's known for more than the medea movies mm-hmm. but can i also just say that i actually kind of want to see medea versus zombies <laughs> <laughs> is that just, a thing yeah you didn't see the trailer Oh no! Wait, or did I dream that? Maybe I don't. I don't know. know. I know. It, I, it pu- sounds like something that would happen. I mean, I've been pushing for like a Medea in space movie. Like, <laughs> just give go it time, off. Give it time. Just, just go as far as you can, Tyler Perry. Sure. But, no, Tyler Perry is actually a really talented guy. It's just his movies that he directs are, mm-hmm. you know, they're they're his movies. Mm-hmm. But um, as an actor, I thought he was a great Baxter Stockman. Like. Mm-hmm. I honestly thought we were going to see towards the end of the movie Shredder was going to turn on him and turn him into the bug. But I do okay. have a feeling we're going to see, you know, Bug Baxter St- Stockman in the third movie. Mm-hmm. And I hope Tyler Perry comes back because he was good because he he played this really good, like, like excitable... He's giggly through this whole movie. <laughs> but it's so perfect because Baxter Stockman <laughs> is such a weird guy. Yeah, he, he definitely... Gets like, that whole, like, bumbling nerd... Um, bumbling nerd, but competent. Right. Like, he knows what he's doing, but he's also, like, really excited at, like, the... At, the, the at, like, oh, like, what they're, what they're going to do. The scene in the trailer where he's like, this is going to be good! Like, when he just got <laughs> like all that, that's like, pretty much exactly his character right there. And it's so perfect because that, I, 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 I loved him in this movie, and mm-hmm. I thought... I I hope he comes back for a third one as Bug Baxter Stockman because I think he could really, mm-hmm. I think he could really sell that and really have some fun with that. I do too. I mean, um, I, I, for Ninja Turtles three, whatever it's called, I I will be there. Yeah, uh, I did think there was a missed opportunity because um, it's at, it's towards the end where like he's getting all excited, he's like we're we're gonna be gods, and Shredder's like no, you're gonna be um, a footnote. What, what is it? You're gonna be a footnote. I. I I felt that was a really missed opportunity because he's like, you're going to be what you've always been. I, th- I thought he's like, you should have said, you're I, I agree. Like, he's I, like, really? You could have set this up. You, know, <laughs> you, you had really, your one an, shot an, right An there, insect and then shoots him with the dart or something. Exactly. Like, yeah, no, I, or, then you didn't have to shoot him. I, I feel like if they called him like, you're a fly, you're an insect, you're a bug, or whatever, just make some kind of insect reference right at that moment, I think that would have perfectly set up him turning into the the fly creature later on. Yeah, no, that's that's true. I'd I'd agree with that. <laughs> and I like I mean I'm I'm really I I don't know. For me, one of the biggest craziest things that like just had me just as an old Ninja Turtles fan who like not obsessive like I think Kyle trumps me as far as Ninja Turtles fans go. Probably yeah. But seeing the Technodrome, yeah, complete with the giant eye on top. Yeah, it, had that, me <laughs> laughing, but also like my inner ten-year-old mm-hmm. screeching, like, "Oh my God, it's the Technodrome!" Right, <laughs> and it, like it's like it's like we've been saying this whole review. It's like they get what the cartoon and the comic was about. They know it's goofy, and they just went balls out with it. And like, you know what? The Ninja Turtles are goofy. We're gonna make it goofy, and we're gonna put a giant fucking Death Star with an eyeball on it. <laughs> 
An eyeball that movie. shoots lasers. Like, an eyeball that shoots lasers. It was, it was, it was, I mean, I walked out of the theater like, oh my god, I, I feel like the nostalgia, like, it wasn't me looking at it through nostalgia, I mm-hmm. genuinely enjoyed the movie, and I, like I said, I, when they do Ninja Turtles 3, which I inevitably hope, inevitably hope they do. Oh, they, they will. I will be there, and I will keep my fingers crossed that they bring back, um, Dave Green? I think that's the director? The, I think, yeah, I think so. Because uh, he, he, I think he, if he's given more time mm-hmm. to kind of stretch out the narrative a little bit, I think he could even do better. As much as I loved how jam-packed the movie was and how it managed mm-hmm. to tie everything together. But, I don't know, in a summer where we just have, you know, movies like X-Men Apocalypse and Civil War and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, deals, you know, yes, they're superhero movies meant to appeal to, you know, comic book fans and stuff like that. But... You know, they're all kind of very gritty. Yeah. It's 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 just kind of a relief to have a movie that's not taking itself too seriously. I mean, as much as I loved Civil War and yeah, Civil War had its share of laughs in it, don't get me wrong. It was just fun to go into the Ninja Turtles movie out of the shadows and just like it was just it, it felt just like a cartoon come to life. <laughs> and it just put that one final stamp on being one giant cartoon when they basically do a rock remix of the 80s theme song as the end credits. I like I like that and I like the art style. <laughs> I thought that was like credits. the final touch on it. It's like, yes, that's exactly how you need to end this movie. Well, I know the guy who directed it this time around, he's like a big Turtles fan from back yeah, in the day. Yeah, I, I saw an interview with him last yeah. week and he was just saying like, yes, I grew up watching the Ninja Turtles. That's like, that was my childhood. So it's like, I feel... You got someone who understood that and grew up with it and is like a, a real fan of it. And that, that's what in. you need. You need to get people who are passionate mm-hmm. about resurrecting these franchises but want to do their own thing with it instead of someone who like, you know, wants to repurpose it. You got to you exactly. got to you got to like the core franchise enough to want to do something with mm-hmm. it but also not just ape the original. Mm. And I, I will say about that uh, the end credits, I love that for like a split second they uh, they reference the ninja rap. <laughs> oh yeah, I like how they they actually <laughs> Vanilla Ice um, Ice Ice oh, Baby uh, makes was, an appearance in the song. Then it's I laugh so hard. They're it's like, like of course they're like, playing Vanilla Ice at the yeah. bar. <laughs> well, Vanilla Ice just reasonably performed the ninja rap. I think like he knows. I I I, I, I don't I don't know what I was what I was listening to, but they were saying that like. Uh, Vanilla Ice said recently that like Ice Ice Baby used to be his like most requested song when he does like concerts or whatever. <laughs> but like more nowadays, people want him to do the Ninja Rap. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> the Ninja Rap was well. For one thing, the Ninja Rap wasn't ripped off of a Queen song. Exactly. That he lied about because of that itty bitty ting. Okay, I will say just just a really side. I I think I thought it was absolutely hilarious. And baby, I'm sorry <laughs> that I have to say this. Me- Melanie, for the longest time, did not realize that was a Queen song. She thought that was Vanilla Ice. Oh, no, no, song. no. Like, a lot of people, like, I get that. A lot of people, you know, unless you listened <laughs> to Queen or you heard the song, you know, you, mm. you would assume that. It's just, I hate when I look at the interviews of Vanilla Ice where he's saying, no, man, no. Totally different song. It's that itty-bitty ting at the end. And it's like, you know, if you're going to rip off the song and you've been caught, just admit it. <laughs> There's no shame in wanting to rip off Queen, okay? Sampling, they're, they're, sampling they're, is a thing. We rappers queen. do it all the time. Okay, I mean, look queen at Anaconda. Baby. baby Got Back got mixed, and Sir Mix-a-Lot is probably sitting on a pile of money bigger than my house right now. <laughs> oh, Sir Mix-a-Lot. I mean, for doing one song in his life and having it sampled in a Nicki Minaj song. But does anyone really listen to the song? <laughs> no. I don't listen to Nicki Minaj. You or don't have mo- to. Or really any music. modern music, for, to be honest. Um... But yeah, I, I guess just in closing for this, it, it was a fun. I enjoyed myself uh, for a, for a movie whose previous entry I did not really enjoy much at all. Uh, this the the sequel, I think, fixed every problem that its predecessor had. It knew to be fun. It knew not to take itself seriously, um, and. It, I think it respects its source material a lot better. And, I mean, I guess I would, for the most part, air those sentiments. Like, I was very pleasantly surprised, because I didn't even bother with the first movie, because I looked Mm -hmm. at the trailers, and I thought, eh, it doesn't look very good. (laughs) 
I mean, I know. People do that, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Pe- people actually use trailers to decide if they want to see movies, but... Um, That's a whole the other trailer. argument. <laughs> What's up? That's a whole other argument. I know. It's not an <laughs> argument. <laughs> Not an argument, but I mean, right. I, I was really pleasantly surprised with Ninja Turtles because the trailer kind of got me a little more excited seeing that it had mm-hmm. a little bit more of a fun spirit to it. You got rid of the old director and brought in someone who knows the franchise, and I think it paid off. I agree. Like, especially with all the stuff going on with movies right now, it was just really nice to see a movie that... I mean, I know I said Ratchet and Clank was harmless fun, mm-hmm. but obviously, you know, you forget about that. Like, I didn't hate myself for seeing it. I didn't feel like I wasted my ten bucks, but you're not going to see me go and, like, go, like, oh, yeah, you got to go see this movie. But out of the shadows, like, I will be like, no, it, if you are even slightly interested in the Ninja Turtles, mm-hmm. go see this movie. It'll make you feel like a kid again. Or if it, if it doesn't, it'll at least be entertaining because some of the stuff that goes on in the movie is just fun. Yeah, the, entire, when, when... the entire river chase with the tank. Yeah, as, as soon as they dropped um, drop a tank... Yeah, I, I will say what really sold it for me. I just, sorry, I, I keep saying oh in closing, but the what sold me on this movie going in is the second that the is it the, the party van is what they call they call it the party van yes the party van the party as soon van. as the party van sprouts <laughs> sprouts robotic nunchuck arms. <laughs> I'm like, all right, we're good. I'm, I'm, I'm sold on this. We're good. They turn it. They, they basically. How are we gonna market this as an action figure? Exactly. Like, how would we uh, how would we market this as a place? But it, it was just like, okay, we've got manhole cover shooters out the front. Okay, that's that's that that's, was st- standard for the party van. It, it's standard, but the fucking like, all right, we we're gonna sprout robotic arms from the side, wheeling nunchucks out of a garbage truck, and I'm like, all right, we're going full cartoon with this. Um, that is what needs to happen. There you that, go. That, that is what more. <laughs> if they make a th- if they ever decide to make a Thundercats cartoon or something. <laughs> Go full ham with it. Give me the yeah. thunder tank. <laughs> give me all the crazy. Give me that. I forget what. I can't believe I'm blanking on this. But give me their fortress. Just this, this is what Superman versus ba- like. I will say this. You know what? You will be happier coming out of this movie than you probably ever will be coming out of Superman versus Batman. Yeah. I didn't even bother seeing that because nobody told me anything good. <laughs> I could go on at length uh, about. Batman v Superman, but this is no, nor the time nor the place for that. Um, we gotta start having a geek debate. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So, I I guess that kind of sums up our our thoughts on uh, Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Uh, good. I liked it. Go see it. If if you're like like Andy said, if you are even remotely interested in the Ninja Turtles, do yourself a favor, go see this. You'll have a good time with it. <laughs> it's, for the, it's for the kids and for the kid at, at heart in you. I, I like that. That's, that's <laughs> very poetic. Thanks. And if you um, can see the hand gestures I'm doing, I'm really selling it. <laughs> I can't see it, but I will see it later when I put this together. Um, so, yeah, there's that for you guys. Uh, I deeply apologize for as long... It's been so long since we've put anything on this channel um you know other than your guys's ratchet and clank review uh, a while back um, yeah that was i mean <laughs> we want to we want to do more but it's just been actually now that i've got this kind of set up really nice i think we totally mm-hmm. can yeah we're i don't want everyone two, everyone's schedule i don't want our he- two fans to be angry at us no um yeah our, our schedules are just kind of hectic uh but we're, we're working it out <laughs> mostly kyle's um we're working, working around we're working on it um, but, um, like I said at the beginning, uh, we're trying out this face cam thing. If you like it, let us know. If you don't, tell us. Uh, we'll stop doing it if you guys hate seeing our ugly faces. Speak for yourself. I will speak for myself. I am a hideous I, man. I, I think I look pretty good. You're a beautiful man, Andy. I, di- I, I, I dig it. Um, good save. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I guess uh, thanks for listening to this. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, share it, like, subscribe, that kind of stuff. I'm bad at ending these things. I'm sorry. Like, comment, subscribe. I think that's what the kids are saying, or at least what yeah. other successful YouTube people oh, are saying. Yeah. But um, no, share the show if you have any requests for. I know we've gotten a few requests. Like, I, I think a buddy of mine wants to see us talk about the Dante's Inferno animated movie, which I want to do. I didn't know that was a thing. 
It's an interesting little piece of film. I still need to make you guys watch Red Line and Heavy Metal. No, oh, yeah! Fantastic movies right there. For me, you need to be there. Uh... Yeah, so hopefully we'll start pumping out content again. And uh, I'm toying around the idea of doing not necessarily Let's Plays, but it seems like a lot of people like game footage and I can hook down Overwatch so you can come watch me struggle at being good at the game. Ink and paint, Twitch streams, something. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I don't want to get swatted. Well, we'll see. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, uh, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Night, everybody. Good night.